also known as Louis Spry. And a writer of the press, you've got stuff to sculpt with, as well as um, a print from one of the artists who signed it. He goes by Louis Spry, who goes by uh, Spywalker. And here you go. Go ahead, take it away. Okay, guys, this is just a picture of my bench. Uh, where I keep my supplies. Uh, the rack is all work in progress figures. I tend to keep a lot going at one time. Uh, I got into the hobby just by uh, trying to have fun with my son. We made uh, the Hall Planet out of computer boxes and styrofoam, and you know, we had a base under it and we bat them on top. And uh, then I progressed into doing head swaps, and then I went into doing a little bit of painting and. Uh, it's just such a cool uh, way of displaying art. I just, you just keep growing, you learn new things, and, and you keep moving on. Uh, these are some of the droids I've worked on. Uh, mostly do kit bashes. Uh, most of the, all the early work is all kit bash stuff. Now I, I do a decent amount of sculpting. Some more droid uh, kit bashes and repaints. Uh, this is a Rebel Alliance pilot set. I was uh, at this moment I was into trying to make all the pilots and the droids that went with them. I made like uh, 35 Astromex now. Another kit bash figure of a uh, fan fiction Jedi. Uh, this was uh, like my rendition of uh, uh, General Grievous before he was put in, the, in his suit, his armor suit. I like doing Clone Wars stuff too. My son's really into the Clone Wars, so he's what really prompts me to do Clone Wars customs. This, was, this set was made before Hasbro released theirs. More droid stuff. The one on the left is actually a background character that's seen in Star Wars A New Hope. The one on the right is uh, just a fan fiction figure. Uh, this was made for Wookie Lover 1138. Uh, this is uh, her character in Clone Wars Disguise. She's right up front, you know, so, uh, yeah, More droids. I've got Astro Max for days. Uh, this is a Twilight Mando. This is a super fun custom. Uh, these days I'm really into the articulation, so I do a lot of, of Joe figures, and then I build up uh, Star Wars parts on them, and I, I sculpt over to kind of hide the hip joints, or I put a belt, belt on to hide the hip joints. Uh, so it's a, the head is a sculpted Leku on a Zartan head. And the helmet is a kit bash of the Twilight uh, female pilot dock and a Boba Fett helmet. And I have this custom uh, right up here back of the panel. Anybody wants to check it out? Uh, another, I did this after Chuck Norris. This is Norris <laughs> Tretch, the baddest bounty hunter in the galaxy. So of course I had to had to make him a speeder bike and. Um, this was uh, probably done a year ago, and I'm, I'm trying to like emulate what Sideshow does with all their swappable parts. You know, parts come off the figure, and then you can put them on the figure. And you do a fair amount of like vehicle work as well. We didn't really include it in the show, but I mean, you do vehicles and yeah. all kinds of stuff. So you do dioramas. There's no end for this. Yeah, yeah I've got a couple here. of vehicles up here again after the panel. Feel free to come by. Uh, the last. A uh, month and a half, I've been into the Jabba's Palace character. Well, I've always been into Jabba's Palace characters. Is that Chevy Tatum on the right from G.I. Joe? Yes. That's right. Yes. Pouty yes. lips. Yeah, those lips. Can't miss them. Um, but, but like eight years ago, I made uh, close to all the characters in Jabba's Palace. And now I'm updating them for recent sculpts and just new paint style and everything. Not to mention, I'm on the Diorama Workshop team, so you can see my Jabba's Palace, my Rancor Pit, and all these custom figures down at the Diorama Workshop booth. More unmade uh, Jabba's Palace creatures. I made, uh, in 37 days, I did 20 customs to bring here to put in, in the Jabba's Palace. This is like working every night late, you know, wife goes to bed, I'm still working. 
Yeah, more of the same. Sergeant Doylan, you know, the first one, I really hope Hasbro will bring that to everybody. That's such a you know, missed opportunity to have standing on the front of your skiff. There we go. Um, when I decided to put the panel together, I wanted to have a broad variety of talents and approaches to the hobby, so you guys can kind of see like the different takes, because there's millions of ways to go out this hobby. Um, so I'm up next. Like I said, Psylops workshops on the website. Uh, there's me. Um, <laughs> a lot of customizers is kind of a child fantasy, like a lot of us just like make a version of ourselves. I've seen today one of my daughters, she's holding her stuff, Monkey, and my wife. And she thinks it's cool that she's got her own figure of herself. You know, there's nothing fancy about our workshops, like all of us use like modified like office furniture, you know, a craftsman workbench, um, just bought bits and pieces here and there. I've been doing this since the early 90s and started off with like vintage customs, you know, and the, the figures Kenner never made. Um, here are some of them, you know, there's like G.I. Joe people here. And it's Brook, very crude, so be, be kind. Um, then, uh, you know, when the new figures came out by Hasbro, I started doing new figures again. And as with all of us, it was mostly just the beginning, a way to fill in the void in the collection, like, oh, you want the rest of them aren't there? And this is just a sampling, I mean, I was cranking these out for a decade. Um, you see Java's aliens, the various cantina people, you know, the deleted Scottish Java. Um, they were actually at C2 on our first diorama workshop when we did Tatooine. And you're making like the weird background people, like, you know, the people that walk around in the background of Mos Eisley. And then what happened was I had made virtually everybody. And then slowly Hasbro started making a lot of those people. And then I go, no, I got two. And I kind of got, I, well, that's no fun. They got their version. And so I decided to make the jump up to six inch figures. And most, I would say, Star Wars people do the traditional 3.75 3 scale. I go to six inches. Some people like it, some people don't like it. Um, and this was the first, oh, and then I, would, I did traditional. And then I decided to start having some fun and making my own take on Star Wars. And this is probably why I found my niche was just like, it set me apart a little bit, was just doing different versions. So what here I have is just a, you know, it's not, I'm not really doing Star Wars, but like, different take on it using the archetypes that Star Wars kind of uses. You know, you got like a Luke, like my version of like an Oriental samurai kind of warrior, what we want, kind of a savage looking Chewbacca warrior and the droids. Um, that really kind of took off. And then the, the next line I did that was really quite popular was the Steam Wars figures. You may have seen these. Um, I like them a lot. I, you know, the steampunking, it got kind of big up. I know it means like a steampunk guy. I just like the aesthetic. And now you see it everywhere. Um, and what you've got, I've got like Rust Bucket, C-3PO, or I, I, I give them different names because they're my own characters, my own designs, I look at them in that way. Those two droids are actually in the next room on display, which is very cool. Um, you can't really see it, but the, the R2 lights up and there's fire in the boiler stove. And what I try to do is like pick on certain visual elements or motifs or themes to kind of make them my own and make them recognizable. I want you to look at it and be like, oh, that's R2-D2, but it's completely not. And a lot of people like the way that that looks. And there's my steampunk bounty hunters. Um, that Boba Fett is probably my favorite figure of all time. I always do. I always do the same ten characters, and I always do a Boba Fett, and that's one of my favorite versions. Um, then I'm a history teacher by trade. I don't never take an arts, so I, I play with the historical things. So this is like a World War II line I did, and I wanted the joints to look like kind of like tanks. And R2 has barbed wire and shovel, and I tried to use actual tank colors. And at this point, I was still trying to, you know, I was pretty holding back with like, okay, Chewbacca's got to be furry and the droids have to be robots. But then you start going into other law, and of course the Nazis aren't even easy parallel for the uh, Empire. Then I start taking, uh, what if the droids aren't human? So I've got a one-eyed blacksmith for R2, and 3 is the talkative bar 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 bartender, and I got Chewbacca as a Native American with a bear pelt. And I started bringing in like the design of the, the masks on the bandages. You see that a lot now, which I thought was a pretty clever idea at the time. Then I went into Samurai, because of course everybody knows that Star Wars borrowed something from Kurosawa, so I did like a Kurosawa Star Wars. I actually set up as a fake news event, like they had found an old Kurosawa film, and these were the designs I made. And uh, then I did a medieval line, um, Obi-Wan. I think this is a solid line. I think some of the lines aren't as good as others, but I think every one of the figures in this line works. Um, you know, I've got the, the droids are basically the people telling the story, like medieval bards, because the movie is told from their perspective. So they're the ones telling the story. And of course, Obi-Wan is the old knight who's taking on the squire. You get the fairy princess, kind of a troll-looking Chewbacca. Um, 
I try to bring in elements like the shape of the Stormtrooper's helmet, so you can kind of see those things. Then my favorite line ever is this one. Everybody knows that Buck Rogers and Flash Gordon influenced Star Wars. This is my take on what that would have looked like. Um, you know, Princess Leia looking like Forbidden Planet. Uh, Han in the space suits. You know, um, very Buck Rogers looking. Uh, Luke Skywalker, and they all have names. You know, that, that's the fun part for me is they all have a backstory for all these guys. I write out the entire thing like a short story. I develop the character. Like who would they be? What they look like? Um, and those are all on the website. And this is kind of just a fun thing to see the process I put together. You can see, like, if you watch one section, you'll see the different versions I've done over time. And I didn't show you that I did a film noir line. And I did, recently did a cyberpunk line, which would kind of be like Akira or Matrix. That was the most recent line I did. Um, and there's a small sampling of like, <laughs> The six inch figures I've done since 2000. That doesn't even include like, and I don't do this all the time. I basically, I've got a daughter and my wife and we spend all our time together. My daughter goes to bed at eight, my wife goes to bed at 10 and then I kind of go to work. And I go to bed at work. I don't want it to take away from my time with them, but 10 o'clock to whenever I get sleepy and then I just pick up the next night. Um, one last thing for I recently got doing some commission work, which has been really, really fun for me. Um, that is Sam Weber, you may know him. He is an avid Star Wars role player, and he had characters, and then he hired Amy Beth Christensen from Lucasfilm to draw them, and then he hired me to make figures of them, which was a really nerd boy you know, moment for me. I also recently gave um, Steve Sansley and Mary Franklin figures this morning. Um, I just got kind of head last night for a line for Patton Oswalt, the comedian who's a big fan, he always a lot of talks on me and really helps me out. And the last thing for him, I have a TV pilot being filmed, a guy in LA contacted me, and they are shooting a pilot. It's being written by Jimmy Kimmel, Jimmy Fallon writers, and it's a stop motion show featuring my figures. So you can look for that. <laughs> and it's a pilot, so it may not get picked up, or we're getting the that isn't that, we're gonna put it on the internet. So and we're up next is Sith Fire, Dayton Allen. Hi, I'm Dayton Allen, I'm Sith Fire 30. Brace Sith yourselves. This is, <laughs> this is ridiculous. It's gonna go to a new level. <laughs> <laughs> Sit fire being, oh that's me going, huh? You know, and that's when I had short hair and I used to boost it up. Um, um, it's a uh, SF or Sit fire being the uh, scene when uh, Anakin in Revenge of the Sith turns around and his eyes are a blaze of fire, and 30 being the age when I took the name. Um, this is my workstation. It's, uh, it likes, like Jamie said, it's nothing uh, new. It's uh, reference material to one side. You see my Sith Temple at the top. I work at that desk. It's where all the photography takes place and everything else. Uh, it's just a little corner of one of the spare bedrooms. Nothing fancy. Uh, here's some of my early work. Um, I think one of the uh, main uh, pieces uh, was green. It was one of the first things I ever posted, General Green. And it was literally nothing but a repaint with uh, two pieces of styrene as the uh, um, as the straps going across his chest. And then I started just doing clones. The uh, Vosk uh, character near the bottom was the first foray into doing a, a actual sculpted head with sculpted hair, and that was many years ago. Uh, you can notice in the background there were some other customs that came out of the Dark Horse comic as well. Uh, and a scout trooper, a little scout trooper there as well. There's one of the pieces that a lot of people recognize in my work. That's Darth Malgus um, from the Old Republic. Um, I uh, really was impressed with the, uh, the cinematic trailers. And uh, each cinematic trailer came out while I was in the process of working on this character, gave a different depiction of this character, you know, uh, either battle damaged or especially the third one where it showed him fresh and pale white. So I kept on doing different head sculpts and it turned out being eight, I think that's eight set head sculpts, uh, plus battle damage body armor, plus the lightsaber, removable belt, removable saber. Um, so that was one of my most involved pieces. This is Darth Krayt from uh, Star Wars Legacy, another Dark Horse Comics character. Behind him, out of focus, is Darth Talon and another Sith. Uh, I, I, I failed to remember his name at this time. Um, those are all custom as well, as well as the, the Sith Temple right behind. That's all made out of sheet styrene and H fix it. And you see that later, right? I believe so, yeah. 
Uh, there's Furlag. No one's getting a lot of respect to this bounty hunter. He was killed off pretty quickly by uh, Boba Fett and Shadows of the Empire. That's where it was uh, jettisoned out of Slave One. But uh, he was just a character that I have not seen any other species shown in the comics. I might be missing him, but they've never shown the species again, so I thought it was a rare character to bring into an uh, action figure into life. Again, it's a total sculpt from top to bottom using a articulated frame that I put together from old existing figures that are store-bought. I literally just cut them up, find the articulation that I want, take a Dremel, Dremel it down to a skeleton, and then totally sculpt over it. Um, here's uh, Dodge Janeer from uh, another Dark Horse comic called Dark Times. Um, behind him, out of focus, is a little H2. He's uh, floating with a little clear stand. Again, he has a removable helmet, and he has a head swap. Um, the tunic can be removed. Um, a lot of detail went into this piece. I'm actually doing a, 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 another version of him riding on this horse from the second edition of, of Dark. I think it's Out of the Wilderness arc that just came out. Um, so look for that. Uh, there's a, uh, how do you say her name? Skira. 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 This is again from Dark Horse. And uh, I just love this outfit that she was in. We all are used to her Jedi robes. This is when she had to go to Course Night and, and, and disguise herself. Well, this was, I think, the, the, the coolest uh, outfit. Tanika Sisters. Um, I, I, I'm still, I, I can't wait until they decide to go ahead and make these for Hasbro. Eventually they're gonna have to, but I couldn't wait anymore. So I went ahead and created my own sculpts. It's a total sculpt of each one. Um, I sort of wanted to make them a little bit menacing than the little friendly ladies that were there at the bar. They have, uh, they have uh, other plans in mind. So one with a blaster, had that evil look to her face. There is Sam Whitler as Starkiller. This is from The Force Unleashed 2. Um, of course, the lightsabers do not light up. That's some Photoshop work there. But uh, I'd, love this. I'd love to have them light up. But uh, that is uh, a total sculpt. Uh, added a little bit of soft goods there. Again, out of a fix it, the head sculpt, everything. So uh, look for other versions of this character as well. There were so many different versions of this character in the first uh, Force Unleashed as well. And I'm busy working on those as well. Here is Savage Press. This is probably one of my favorite pieces I worked on, one of my most uh, involved pieces. Um, a total sculpt, uh, two separate head sculpts. Um, full body armor can be removable, all replaced by magnets. Wow. I did not know that, that's awesome. Yeah, just, they just hook on like magnets. Rare earth magnets right there. Yeah, and here real quick is uh, Knights of the Old Republic uh, full set. Uh, John Jackson Miller I saw, I saw these and went nuts about them. Um, I love that comic book series. And uh, much more, especially a dark scion that I'm working on right now coming from that. Uh, here's some more of it. This, uh, same carrot from the uh, Knights of the Old Republic. And that's in, him in the spacesuit. And the spacesuit helmet is removable. It can be replaced. The head is articulated and all that. Here is a little quick shot of Darth uh, Talon. And uh, she's going to be uh, she's going to be updated soon. And here is Mark Hamill as Luke Skywalker from the uh, Invasion comic, uh, Dark Force. Uh, of course, that lightsaber does not light up. That's a Photoshop job. But, uh, and here is the Bomb Warrior. Got a lot of my inspiration from uh, H.R. Keeger uh, doing this sculpt. Again, taking on, I love doing diorama type shots, theatrical ones to it. So next one we're gonna do is basically just a kind of discussion, a little more informal about where both the slides know how you do this, what exactly goes into it. Um, so the first thing you have to do is uh, kind of, have an idea, you read a comic book, you play a video game, you just have some weird thought, something pops in your head. <laughs> For example, my idea was, I've got a line coming out, no one's seen it, it's Pirate Star Wars. I had a, 10 years ago as an idea, and just kind of filed it away and build the pieces up. So then what you do is you go out and you like, if you're gonna do a really simple custom, you don't wanna do the sculpting, like you know, Dick, which would take you some time, but hopefully we all hope to aspire to that level. Um, so you say you have gathered four figures. So I made this figure the other day, two hours, just for this PowerPoint. Grab four figures or parts of figures, and then you kind of cut them up. 
and then you kind of put them together. And then the figure starts to kind of take shape. Um, and then you assemble them, you can do articulation, you can do glue, whichever you prefer, kind of comes together. And then you gotta, then you gotta paint them, go for a base coat, and then you're gonna want to do some detailing, and then you have my version of Boba Fett as a Spanish conquistador slash pirate, you know. So the idea is that the Empire is the Spanish Empire, and Boba Fett is a Dutch mercenary who works for the Empire. Um, and then you take a photo, and you're good to go. Um, no one's seen that. I guess that's the first time anyone's ever seen that except my wife. Um, so, um, so. so, different types of customizing. Have you guys done repaints before we all started? I started with yeah. repaints. This was, I, I was just trying to find images, and this was just some figures. No one's, I never posted these, no one saw them. I just did Hasbro figures at the Kenner paint job. And you can just see like what a paint job can do. And like, oh, that's fun, you've got that version of the figure. And then you could do, some are sculpting, some are build. This is just polystyrene, which is a really easy to work with sheets of plastic. And those guys are almost 80% scratch built. This is more of a construction element. You know, you're building with like hard materials, you're not really sculpting. And then part swapping, why don't you talk about part swapping? Yeah, this is, some, this is just part swapping, uh, journaling down parts on figures that uh, and then a little sculpt to fill in and uh, make it look like the reference picture for the character. And what you have on the left here is called, we call it a whip, yep. or a work in work. progress. And that kind of gives you an idea to compare, like, oh, that's what it looked like when you paint it, and it really kind of comes together. Yep. I'm not going to talk about sculpting, so. Uh, yeah. Matt, this is uh, another bomb war I'm working on. It's just like, it's Abe's fix it sculpt, and uh, you know, I, I started with repaints a long time ago, back about 95. And it's sort of just, it's a hobby. And it's something that you just uh, continue to work and work and work. And then you get to a certain point, and I'm still learning as we're going. So, and then eventually, once you kind of have assembled your skill set of part swapping, painting, and sculpting, you can really start to put all those skills together to create kind of a whole new figure. And to give an idea what can kind of go into it, what you have here is the, the recipe. And I don't usually do recipes because that's the people who are taking my recipes and then making them and selling them on eBay as mine. So I've had to become a little more secretive which kind of stinks. Um, then I've got Lord of the Rings stuff, sculpting stuff, polystyrene, wire, thread, polystyrene, things from other figures, you know, sculpting, and you put it all together and it creates this whole new figure. The fun thing for a customer, I should probably agree with this, is looking at other customizer stuff and then like trying to see like, exactly, yeah. how do you do that? Yeah. Now, um, then what do you do? If you got all these figures, what are you gonna do with them? Um, I display mine, you know, that's one of my display cabinets in my basement. Um, can't, the dioramas, I think, is a natural evolution. Both Ellie and I work on this, the diorama workshop. You've got to come down and check that thing out. I've been doing that with Frank since C2. That's by Cantina. Yeah, this I built this at C2 where I met Frank and Jamie. Uh, this was my fan build building. And, uh, this is kind of how I display my stuff. I have multiple shelves with different dioramas on them. And and this stuff is just, it's foam core. You can yeah, buy it. Like, super yes. easy to do. <laughs> And there's my Java's throne room, lights up, plays music. We're gonna keep moving along here, get moving. And here's the uh, the temple I'm building. It's still a work in progress. It's all sculpted. Now, and of course, plug in the workshop and check it out if you have a chance today. It's, the, it's huge. There are also people who do photo novels. Photo novels are you make almost like a comic book with your figures and then narrate it, and you put those on the internet. I'm not gonna take a lot of our time with this because I want to move on. But uh, one thing I did, I did this when I was a kid with actual film cameras. Then I did that again with VHS when I was a kid. And then I made a movie with my toys. I watched this on YouTube, so I'm not going to bore you. My daughter helped me with this. She was five at the time. <laughs> Crude special effects, okay? It's not right. I tried to emulate the style I did when I did my first one when I was a kid. And it is shot for shot. There you go. I mean, you get the idea. It's called Toy Wars. You can find it on YouTube. That's very cool. Um, Now 
I'm going to go through customizing 101. Lightning, Lightning round. round. Lightning round. Get ready. Here we go. No, I'm um, kidding. <laughs> Um, oh boy, slip on down. Hold on. Technical difficulty. So, part swap, we mentioned it earlier. Here's some whips. This was a John Cole from 13, 13 Monkeys I did, Terry Gilliam movie. Bruce Willis, they get a lot of just junk glued to a figure to get that kind of look and shape. Here's a uh, Charles Tarkas from John Carter, the book, not the movie. Um, <laughs> Yop Soren from uh, the second skiff. You can see how the parts cut out. Yeah. Very nice. Parts. Again. And then tools of the trade, yeah, you just what you gotta have. You know, you gotta buy some exact amount. Exact amount. Cut your be really careful. By the way, there was a safety warning. Like if you try this, kids, be super careful. Yeah. Don't, you know, get your parents help. Yeah. Um, you're gonna need parts. We call them fodder. That is an IKEA bin full of just body parts, which sounds kind of weird, um, serum fillerish, but it's just arms, hands. Everybody's got the fodder bins. Um, Dremel, you know, yeah. have one. Yeah. Sculpting. Any, any sculpting yeah. tools. You know, nice. I use toothpicks. And we, we also have specific tools. What do you use? I use uh, rubber shapers. And I use exacto blades sometimes. I mean, toothpicks. A lot of things. Files, side cutters, things like that. Painting. There's lots of brands. You're going to want to go to acrylic unless you want water washer. What do you use? I use the Flow Quill uh, by Testers. Yep. Uh, as dry. And, and any of these, as the situation arises, what do you Yeah, I use Model Masters. You don't want that. That's like Walmart paint, it'll chips and flakes. It's got like a couple good uses, but steer clear of it. Now, the power of a paint job is a part of the skill. That's the one they Mesco made from Hellboy, and I simply just repainted that for the most part. You can see like it really they don't show up the sculpting work of some of the artists sometimes. Dry brushing, isn't it? Brush. about dry brushing? Yeah, dry brushing all the detail that I sculpted and took time to sculpt in the uh, in the detail in his, in his clothing, Star Killer's pants and things like that. You want to bring that detail out. And the key is you put a dark base coat down and you lightly dry brush those lighter shade to kind of give the illusion of light and shadow. Then there's uh, more dry brushing. It's good for hair, it's good for cloth. Then there's a wash. You want to talk about washes? Yeah, well, let me say about uh, one thing I do is I paint my entire figure black once I've grinded down all the joints and sanded it down. Uh, and then I do like a semi dry brush to get every color you see there. And that's kind of like a pre weathering because it leaves the black in all the creases. And this is a personal preference. Some people love dry brushing, some people like washing. My visual look has become the wash. I do a lot of washes because that grimy, kind of dirty feel. Um, what do you prefer? A combination of both, I don't know. Yes, a combination of both. Yeah. Same here, I do a combination of both. I want to show you like the power of how they can be used differently. That's the exact same wing. On the left, I painted the, I painted the wing on the left white and then gave it a gray wash. The wing on the right is painted gray with a white dry brush. And you can kind of see the uses and what, you know, you kind of got to pick what, what is this dust going to be used for. This is simply the Hasbro Gamorian guard figure that doesn't have the fur diaper on. And I just washed it with black wash paint. You, a wash is you take a paint and you dilute it heavily with water and you just put it on the figure and it runs through the cracks and crevices to accentuate the detail. That figure is a combination of both, as we said, we all know. Eventually you're going to graduate to that and use both for whatever the situation arises. Fabric versus metal versus hair. Sculpting, once again. Yeah, uh, I started off with Super Sculpty, and I recommend anybody that's starting out in this hobby use Super Sculpty first. I think that's universal. We all start with it. It's easy to find. Walmart has it. Easy to work with. Yep. Then when you want to step up to more of an epoxy type sculpt, something that will harden, you only have a four hour cure rate. So you want to be able to know what you're doing before you do it. This is like you mix two things together, then it gets hard, whereas sculpting you bake it in your oven. This is another kind of two-part polymer kind of thing when you mix it together, beta type or green stuff, gets hard in a short period of time. Nova pipe, another one of the two-part polymers. Here I put a quick pro compass together. What do you sculpt with? I sculpt with Aves Fix It. Aves Fix, Aves fix It? Aves fix it. I use Aves epoxy mostly, but fix it sometimes. You can see the pros and cons as far as work time and the benefits. By the way, we're going to put this on my website. If you guys can't do, you know, you'll be going to have access to this later if we're going too fast for you. Sculpting, what you're doing is you're sculpting over an existing figure just because it's easier. Um, there's like a Yoda, I did an Aquarius Yoda a long time ago, just sculpted over it. Was this a little bit Yeah. Um, yeah, I just uh, basically create a frame and then do this. Yeah, you know, at this point now, I'm almost doing 100% full sculpt, uh, keeping the articulation of the frame underneath. Uh, there's a public set work in progress. 
uh, Sucker Punch, that's Baby Doll. Um, working on her, get the figure, figurative look down and then start sculpting all the other details on it. That's another thing about what you can see, it's like just the idea of sculpting. You're sculpting over existing parts, some more, some less. And Bane from The Dark Knight Rises. Uh, he's still work in progress. He's going to have about three or four different torsos to him. So I'll uh, be looking out for that. Just to be clear, like he's doing this on a 3.75 inch scale. He's sculpting that tiny little thing. Not on the computer, not being tricking it down. It's amazing. And another thing, he sculpts the actual muscles and everything of the figure and then puts clothing on. Yeah, that's why it's so perfect. He doesn't just go right to the clothing. This is the technique I do where I roll Aves out like fabric and then I actually drape it. And Aves is so hard it actually doesn't break. Whereas if that was sculpted, it would be brittle and fall. This is the line I'm going to show later if you have time. It's the Roman Empire meets the Star Wars prequels. Because awesome. I made a medieval line which would be the original trilogy. There's, and there's Bane, the sculpt finished, and then the head sculpt, the painted. Polystyrene I mentioned earlier is plastic. There's my Captain Rex, Roman Emperor. Nice. Um, and it's polystyrene and a lot of part swapping and paint in that regard. Um, casting. You can make you can make molds of things and start making casts of them. You make rubber silicone molds, you make resins, you have to crank out some pieces. This is amazing how you guys are using this. You can make a mold of something, add this to your resin, and it shrinks it down. So I could buy a sideshow 12 inch head and shrink it down to a six inch figure, and then double shrink it down to a Kinder size Hasbro figure. You know, if you want to get more into it, we've all got websites and blogs, you can Google it, there's tons of great forums for it. Um, we'll flip the QA. If you want, do you want to see the Roman figures? We have one minute for QA. Two minutes. Do you want to see the Roman figures? Yeah. All right. What now? Yeah, if you guys want to do we line up for the QA, how does that work? Or? Just send, raise your hand. Raise your hand, okay. Um, so there's Captain Rex. Um, I want to put these are all on the website like in three days if you want to get better versions than the camera can take them, feel free. There's the Emperor. There's kind of Padme as a senator. That was an experiment. That is actually like the girl from 300, Gorga. That is an eight inch figure and just by like cutting it down and reworking it, I got it down to like five inches. Because so I was just trying to see if I could do it. Now the idea with this, the bad guys are the barbarians attacking the Roman Empire. So we've got the Django Fett. The guy on the right is kind of a gothic Darth Maul, and that's the one I'm giving away today. So no one's seen that, someone's going to walk away with it. Um, and so when that blows up in a couple of days, like, you'll have the figure on your shelf that's, you know, all over the internet. That's cool. And my Roman Jedi. Nice. So, quest called oh, Darth Maul. Yeah, yeah, yeah. General Grievous. That's cool. That's awesome. How about that? That, that one's like, that's not going anywhere. That's my favorite. <laughs> There's always like, I like that one. It was okay. That's, that, that's my favorite. All right, questions. Yes. Did you do, uh, like, did somebody request a particular figure for you guys to do that? Is anybody asking you to do that? Commission work, do you do commissions? Yeah, I do commission work. Yeah, I do so. Uh, starting next year, doing commission work. I said this year, but I couldn't do it. Even if it's just, like, one specific figure? That's all we do. We don't, we don't make molds of these. We make one of them. Like, this dark Maul is a one of a kind. I make, I make no molds, no, no nothing. It's right. I'm done. Like, like, if I requested, let's say, I would love to have an action figure from um, Victoria Principal from Dallas, right? Oh, yeah, people do that. Yeah. And if we don't do it, other people do it. I don't do it a lot just because like, I want to do my own stuff, but it pays the bills. So I'll like, you know, do one here and there and make a couple of bucks and then move on. Other questions? Yes? I don't mess with removable parts. Okay. What do you say? Yeah, I use removable parts, but I've not used those rare earth magnets yet. The question was about the removable heads, the magnets. Uh, you have to dribble a hole out and put the magnet in, I suppose. I, yeah, I try to use like a pin system or something for most of the stuff I'm doing. I'm sorry, I'll repeat the questions here. If you can speak loud, that'd be great for everybody. Yeah. Where do you find most of your videos? I personally, I go to like, there's a comic book show and they actually know me, so the dealers all save the junk figures no one wants to buy. You know, some of loose figures for three bucks, garage sales, eBay, of course. Yeah, same here at uh, eBay and just uh, discount stores. I have a specific kind of figures that I might want, and I'll just buy like a lot of them. You know, they gotta be cheap. I can't, buy, I can't afford to buy them at retail. I hit thrift stores, uh, Walmart, Target, pretty much anywhere I can find stuff. Another question? Yes. Um, outside of Star Wars, what are your, what would be your favorite property you have? What question or what's a dream property you love? 
The question was, what do we work with outside of Star Wars? I've done I mean, Marvel, DC. I did every character from the Dune book. It was 30 figures, six inch. So it was my version of what I saw when I read the book. And those are in a museum in Poland. I sold the whole set, which was pretty cool. You've got this crazy. I'm working on Alien 1979 project. It's ridiculous. I'm doing uh, all of it. And uh, Super 7, if you're out there, I love that you're bringing the vintage figures. But uh, I'm actually doing the diorama of the galley and the Nostromo, since here you're in the Nostromo uh, um, bridge. I'm going to be doing that, uh, sheets diorama. And uh, just expect a, a lot more to come with that one. And I'm doing Blade say, Runner and a couple other things as well. Uh, I would say my second favorite line would be Indiana Jones. I've, I've made some dioramas, tons of indie figures that were oh. released with the line. Got two of them up front. Guys, before you leave, I think I'm going to put on my group. The giveaway. Here's how it's going to work. Underneath your chair, we put some stickers. Reach under and see what you got. And at the end of the show, when we're done, bring it up and we'll give you your thing. And for one of my giveaways, I would like, if you think, how many people under 16 can customize action figures in here? Raise your hand. If you're under 16 and you customize action figures. Anybody? If, if, you, if you're under 16 and you customize action figures, make, you make yourself safe. Lucas, come on up. Under 16 and you customize action figures. So if you guys have any more questions, I know people are kind of got... Uh, uh, moving around with the chairs. These guys are going to be across the hall in the social room. So if you wanted to ask them any questions or get any tips on customizing figures, you can uh, head over there as soon as this room clears out. Please feel appreciated. That's all right. That's all right. Thanks, guys.